Do you remember when RTX 4090s were doing this? Yeah, this stuff was sizzling like eggs and bacon cooking on the sidewalk in Texas. This is caused by the 12VH power connector. And after all that, NVIDIA and other, hey, we're currently investigating the reports of melting power connectors. We're aware of about 50 cases globally. So this was quite a while ago. It's like, oh, so they're figuring out the problem, everything. But have you ever wondered, did they actually solve the problem with the power connectors? What I'm here to tell you is... They have not. GPU repair shop shows a box of 200 melted RTX 4090 connectors from one month alone. 200 in one month. Obviously this is gonna make your graphics card obsolete and also can make it a fire hazard. Even though at multiple times has revised the power connector and has worked with its partners to revise it, we're still getting issues with the original 4090s. I don't know if the new ones have had updated power connectors. Let me know if you know that for sure. I personally have been very disappointed with the 12 volt high power connector. This cursed thing, the power adapter. Oh no. And it makes me question why this thing even exists. I was like, ooh, 40 series cards. These are really cool. They're efficient, they're fast. They might be priced a little bit too high, but you know, we're gonna ignore that for now. But my biggest disappointment when I opened up these graphics cards. You have to use this cable. Oh boy. Like, look how ugly this adapter is. You're, you're buying a brand new graphics card and it's on this stupid ass looking connector. Then I had more issues when I went to plug it in. Like, come with me, come on, let's see. And here's my RTX 4070 Ti Super. So first I'm gonna turn on the power supply. There's a little LED that turns on with the connector, right? So that means that there's nothing plugged into here. Let's go ahead and plug in the 12 volt high power connector. So let's fully seat it, right? As far as I can tell, it didn't make really a click, but it's in there. I push on it. I don't feel comfortable pushing on it, you know what I mean? That is still on, right? And you might think, oh, okay, so go ahead and plug this into these cables. Okay, so those are plugged in. Look at the cable, and you can see the LED saying that nothing is plugged in. It's still there. Let's go ahead and turn on the system and see if there's any issues. You can see clearly the, the GPU spins up. Okay, at least right now it is having issues. One second. Let's turn it off and turn it back on. I just uh, did that and it still isn't turning on. Um, let me see, just in case. I'm on the right input. Yeah, this is not what I even planned to do, but <laughs> it's like uh, we're having issues. Let's try reseeding everything and see if that works. Hold the card up, see if I can hear a click. Man, that looks like it's plugged in all the way. Am I right? Are you gonna, are you gonna work? Oh God. Oh, wait, hold up. Oh, 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 here we go. The, dude, I just live had an issue with the 12 volt high power connector and it was broken. Just like that. I, even though there's a red light on the GPU, when you turn it on, that red light disappears. It's not there anymore once the GPU's on and running in a game. It's like, you can't know when this damn connector is plugged in properly. And this is really stupid when a connector is designed for anyone and everyone to plug in their graphics card and be able to do this thing. It needs to be kind of foolproof, <laughs> like full F-U-L-L, but also F-O-O-L proof. Not everybody's gonna be a technical wizard when you buy a consumer grade graphics card. I mean, just look at Seasonic here. So on their page for the 12 volt high power connector, that has to have a certain bend radius. So you can't bend your connector, like if it's anything less than 35 millimeters until it bends. And to be honest, a lot of people just can't do this with their cases. It's kind of like me with my RTX 4080. I can't bend that power connector to fit in my case. I, I just have to go no side panel and unless I buy another case, but I don't want to buy another case. Like, come on. NVIDIA is asking people to upgrade their power supplies, upgrade their cases. When a lot of people only upgrade their power supplies like every like 10 years when it comes down to it. Like if you buy a decently specced power supply, it has a 10 year warranty on it. NVIDIA launched their GPUs and we're like, hey, you either got to upgrade them or you got to use this goofy ass, silly looking adapter on it. 
and uh, have fun with that. And that's why companies like Seasonic have made things like these right angle connectors, all right, with 12 volt high power so that you can plug it into your graphics card. Companies like Cable Mod have also done the same thing. But Cable Mod cables, because it is like difficult to get the, the seating in on the cable correctly, have had to recall their cables. Cable Mod themselves have had a version 1.0 and they had a version 1.1. Both of these got recalled because a 12 volt high power connector is just unreliable and you don't know what results you're going to get when you actually make the thing. So I think this really begs the question, why does the 12 volt high power connector even exist? If it's such a pain and there's been so many issues with it, why even bother when 8-pin has been so reliable for so long? And a lot of people understand what the heck is going on with it. Let's dig into it a little bit deeper why, at least I can theorize why this would be the case. So culprit number one, RTX 4090. And the RTX 4090, as you might know, is the fastest graphics card, at least consumer level in the world right now. And part of that is because it draws 450 watts and that's a lot of power what's even crazier basically all the rumors are out for what the 4090 ti could have been this card could have drawn up to 600 watts and coincidentally enough what you'll find out is when we go to this wikipedia page 12 volt high power if you plug in one of these cables can rate your 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 graphics card up to 600 watts which means over one small connector you can get a lot of power compared to the 8-pin PCIe power. This is the standard for what's been for a while now. Technically up to spec. We'll get into why this isn't exactly true all the time a little bit later. This connector is 150 watts, at least rated up to spec. So that means if you were to go onto an RTX 4090, your graphics code is going to start looking a little bit like this. And this is no offense to Power Color Red Devil with their 7900 XTX here. A 4090 is 450 watts. That means if you already do it up to spec, each of these connectors here are 150 watts and you have all of these connectors hanging off your GPU. It's just kind of messy and not elegant. Obviously, you know, basing off of the models of graphics cards that Nvidia has been making, they look really clean. They look professional. And it's pretty clear to me that they would want to slim down the design of their cable. So doesn't this big hunk of junk hanging off the side of their GPU that they want to simplify it down to one cable. And that simplicity can come at some extra benefits for people because having one cable to plug in your GPU, if you don't have to deal with a stupid adapter, which we'll get into later, I don't like this thing. For the average person, even though we've had issues with connectors melting and all that stuff, things in an ideal sense, you would just be able to plug in and it works. That means for the average person, they only need to plug in one cable and this thing could power anything up to an RTX 4070 all the way up until a 4090. To be honest, the simplicity of one connector just makes installing a GPU for the average person a lot better. But was it worth it? Let's look at these side by side to get a little bit better of a comparison. So I made this expert diagram here so you can see what the difference is between the connectors. So if you look at the specs of the cables, both of these are 16 gauge cables. So the smaller the number, the larger the gauge of cable is. So it's a little confusing, but both of these are supposed to be 16 gauge cables. So it starts to make you wonder, this is really a physics problem, right? Like we can't break physics. Cables can only carry so much power over them before they start to get too hot. These two connectors here on the left side is 12 volt high power. That means here that there is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve 10, 11, 12 connectors here that all carry power over to the GPU. Whereas on the right side, you know, for this 350 watt RTX 3080 here, whereas the left side is the RTX 4070 Ti Super, can technically get all of that power over 16 cables instead. So you could just see that there's, there's got to be a clear difference which and how these are carrying power over these connectors. And when you dig into this here, 12 volt high power, yes, it's rated to do 600 watts and that's for a specific reason, but because 8 pin power, you know, it has all of those those pins to work with and 16 gauge wire is like it's just physics how big the wire is. It is what it is. 150 watts isn't all PCIe 8 pin power can do. Technically, according to Durbauer, this connector can really be rated up to 220 to 280 watts. Almost every single 8 pin PCIe power can genuinely carry 
220 plus watts with no problem whatsoever. And Derbauer even tested an RTX 2080 or I think, it, yeah, I think it was a 2080. And he was able to power that entire two or three eight pin card, just over a six pin power adapter. And it worked perfectly fine. So it really makes you like wonder like how foolproof the eight pin power connector is. The big thing about it is you want a reliable and easy to integrate connector for a lot of people just to make you not have to worry about it. And even though this says it's rated 150 watts, it can really do a lot more than that. So how did NVIDIA and PCIe or PCI SIG, how did they get this one connector to rate at 600 watts? And as you see on the 12 volt high power, the pins that carry all the power, but it also has these four sense pins. With the sense pins, it's supposed to go to the power supply and tell you how much power it's actually carrying and how much your power supply and your GPU are asking for. And are you actually rated to do that type of power? As another plus of why this cable might exist is so that we can save cost on cables and connectors and stuff like that because we don't have to use as much copper because these four pins know how much power is being carried through and they don't have to be overkill like how eight pin PCIe is but sometimes overkill can just be more reliable because when Nvidia released this connector Obviously, it's had so many problems that I'm not sure if this is ever ready to be released. The thing is, I can really appreciate NVIDIA for trying something new with the 12VH power connector, right? The PCIe 8-pin standard has been around since 2007. And though this connector is very reliable and it's honestly over spec for what it's capable of, there might be a way to make it better. And that's what NVIDIA is trying with 12VH power. Clearly, NVIDIA also wants to push the power limits on GPUs and slapping four 8-pin power connectors on it isn't really that practical and it's not as elegant as what NVIDIA wants to go for for people. Yeah, I, I can appreciate the 12 volt high power connector existing and it's definitely here to push graphics cards forward. But the question is, how do you release something like this to the public? Because it is clearly experimental. Do you go through years and years to test if this works to make sure it's not gonna have issues when it releases? Or do you just give it a shot? What's interesting is Nvidia decided to launch 12 volt high power connectors on a generation of GPUs that hasn't been that exciting. Did they take 40 series, you know, a pretty boring generation GPUs, as a time to experiment with their power connectors and give that a shot. We're gonna have to see with 50 series if that's going to be better or not, but clearly 12 volt high power has taken a while to get better on RTX 40 series. Like at this current moment, there has been revisions to it and now it's not even called 12 volt high power, it's called 12 volt two by six connectors. Pretty interesting because even though they decided that it was enough to release on RTX 4090, their most powerful graphics card is clear out issues there. It took them a while, even mid-generation to fix this thing up. There's also the other side of it is like, imagine getting an RTX 4090, you pay like $2,000 for that damn GPU. You're always constantly worrying if your 4090 is going to melt and start a fire in your PC. You always wonder if your 4090 is going to randomly kill itself just because you're running a game on it. Why did they even do this? Like, why did they not wait longer to make sure everything was perfect before they released this to the public? You can do as much internal testing as possible. Granted, I wouldn't have liked to see three 8-pin connectors on a 4090, but if that's what you have to do, it's what you have to do. You know what I mean? It just, it is what it is. This has just been such a mess for this generation of graphics cards. It just makes it annoying to use them. So it makes me question why Nvidia ever wanted to do something like this for GPUs and why this is maybe the most pointless or the dumbest thing that's happened to a GPU generation so unnecessarily for a long time. Now you can fight me on that. This is just stupid. Why does this connector exist? I, I just wanted to talk about it, <laughs> especially with the recent story coming out about a bunch of 4090s still having issues today. I think that's absolutely ridiculous. And Nvidia hasn't honestly acted out to like refund people on those things. Nvidia, the $1 trillion evaluation company or almost $2 trillion now won't return their 4090s to you know, fix the connectors for people and update them to the new standards. Why didn't they put two 12 volt high power connectors on the 4090 to make sure if one failed 
then it would be fine. Or if it was, they weren't going to get too hot because there's two to even out the load. I don't know why. There's so many things that should have happened with this that just haven't happened. And it's frankly really gross. Let me know what you think about the 12 volt high power. Have you tried it? I know a lot, not too many people have 40 series graphics cards and a lot of people that maybe even do have them, they may have a 4060, which usually doesn't have 12 volt high power. It's usually just a eight pin. If you like using them or do you not like using them, did you buy a new power supply? That's been about it for me. I'm gonna see you guys in the next video. Y'all have a good one or at least try to in peace.